Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's review. Today we're going to be looking at this pen, which is the Aurora 88 Anniversario. The 88 Anniversario is a limited edition release of Aurora's classic 88 model for their 70th anniversary, and it was released throughout 2017 in a bunch of different colors, eight different colors, the red being one of them, and they kind of had a mixed reception upon release and I think the discourse on the pen since then has evolved a little bit and personally I've had one for about two years so I kind of wanted to give my thoughts on the pen in general and talk about the things about this model that were and still are a bit uh, divisive. So let's take a look at the pen. So this is the Aurora 88 Anniversario in red and to talk about this pen in general I wrote this down to sort of think about how I approach looking at this pen which is can you still appreciate something imperfect even if you know it's not as good as it can be and I think you can and that's why I think I really enjoy this pen and uh, that's for a couple of reasons but first the pen in general let's move that out of the way the pen in general uh, is Aurora's 88 model, classic, been around for a while, gone through a few design iterations, but I do think it's really nice. It's got those rounded ends, the same body as the Aurora Optima, which, it was, which is their other main model, with a nice ball clip. This one's got lovely looking red plastic. The plastic really does look quite nice with the uh, Aurora and cursive on the relatively simple cap band. And then, as you can see right there, it is 17 out of 188, so they made 188 of each color. And if you uncap it, you can see that this one has an ink window. I have it uninked right now, just so you can actually kind of see the ink window. And it has what it is famous for, uh, for better or for worse, depending on what you think about it, is that Aurora 14K Flex Nib. Um, now I've seen a bunch of different takes on this nib from all the people who initially reviewed it when it came out and the consensus was it was pretty good but kind of disappointing for what it was advertising. Um, personally I disagree. I think this is this is probably one of my favorite nibs out there which kind of it goes into this thing that I was talking about. I think the nib is the best part about this pen. In my opinion, it's like the best flex nib for everyday writing, which is it's not a wet noodle. It's not like a super vintage flex pen, which will just like go full flex at like a slight bit of pressure. It's not like a steel flex nib where it really takes effort to flex, but it just gives you a really nice bouncy feeling as you write with it, which we'll see in the writing sample. But I really like the flex nib and still this. So what do I mean by this? Um, it's a piston filler, like all of our 88s and Optimas, and the piston actually, it works, it works really well. I mean, it's pretty smooth. I haven't really heard of them breaking. I mean, I've heard of Aurora's breaking, which <laughs> we'll get into that too, but the piston works well. It's a little difficult to clean because of that little um, Aurora piston filling style thing where that little that little bit of ink at the end just really can't come out unless you unscrew the nib section and like like flick it out into the sink or wherever you're cleaning your pens uh, but it's still not that easy I've I've gotten better at it that's for sure but sometimes I just don't really want to I just don't see the point in doing a full clean if I'm just going to ink it back up again. But, uh, yeah, everything I like everything about this part of the pen. Um, honestly, I think this is one of my favorite pens, this this part right here. Don't, don't pay attention to this. <laughs> um, because it's a, a great size, piston filler, ebonite feed, 14K gold nib that's lovely to write with for everyday, like, bouncy writing. And yeah, it's it's fun to use, easy to use, uh, and it works great. However, 
I have three of these pens, which goes to tell you that I do enjoy them. Uh, two of them I don't have with me right now. Um, I have the blue Optima of this Aurora Flex um, pen, and then I have the blue 88 Anniversario. So it's just like this pen, but blue. And both of those and this one all have the exact same problem. And the problem has been remedied on the other two, and then it still has that problem now again. And that is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but as I turn that, you can see where it's sort of messing with the reflection on the pen. That's a crack. The acrylic in this cap has like a stress crack in it. And I've seen it happen with other people's 88 Anniversarios and Optima Flex pens. It happened with my other Optima and my other 88, both of which I sent to Aurora to get repaired for $35 each. They gave me a new cap, sent it back, and then three months later they both cracked again. Which is really, I mean, it's really frustrating, you know? Like, this pen's really expensive. Um, and I have mentioned, like, I still really enjoy using it, but it has a crack in all of them and in all like basically the exact same place it's a known issue with these pens uh, I don't think it impedes usability but it remains to be seen whether it'll get worse in the future it really hasn't on this one I haven't gotten this one repaired just as like a tester um, the one good thing is that means that these can be got uh, bought secondhand for relatively cheap about 300 bucks which is really not cheap in the grand sense of things, but in terms of Aurora's, it's not bad, especially for what you get. Um, because, like I said, this part of the pen right here, very good, one of my favorite pens. This part of the pen, very problematic. And for that reason, it makes this pen really imperfect. And I know it can be better. But, can I still appreciate it? For me, Yes, I really do enjoy using these pens. For you, for someone else, maybe that's not the case, and that's okay. Um, I definitely, like, obviously, it plays into uh, how I feel overall about the pen. Um, but how I feel overall about the pen is still relatively positive, even though it's got that issue. Oh, there's uh, someone intensely gaming down the hallway, so... <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah. Let's go over a little bit more about the Flex Nib. So, this is, this is definitely my favorite part about the pen. The story of this nib is apparently in, like, some dude's garage, they found the tooling that was used to make Aurora nibs in the past. So like Aurora, ha Aurora makes their own nibs. They have like a completely different design. Here, let me show you that design. Because I happen to like Aurora a lot and be foolish enough to spend money, lots of money on them. Uh, this is their standard nib design. Uh, you might have seen this pen in my first review that I ever did. The uh, review of my Aurora Optima Viola. That's their standard design. It looks pretty cool. But I really do have a soft spot for this design that vintage looking very simple but very beautiful design and then compared to uh, regular Aurora nibs which are you know pretty stiff um, this one the tines do spread now of course that's not as much flex as maybe some vintage flex pens but on release this nib was definitely much maligned by people saying it's only a semi flex nib but I have to say, in terms of like normal use, this feels much closer to a vintage flex nib than a lot of other modern flex nibs. Um, and I've used, I've definitely used a good amount of vintage flex. I'm definitely not an expert, but uh, I have come across a lot of vintage in my time. Um, not, not a very long time, I, I, <laughs> I must admit, only a few years, but over like the past three or four years, I've experimented a lot with Flex, and this is probably one of the ones I enjoy using the most. So, enough of me rambling on the pen. I think this is more of just a discussion than a review, really, just about what this pen means 
for you, for me, for anyone that would want to consider getting a pen like this, it's objectively broken, like it's not perfect, but I still find it a lot of fun to use. So let's show you a little bit of writing sample, let's ink it up, let's show some size comparisons, and then uh, give my final thoughts on the pen. So this is the Aurora 88 Anniversario compared to a Sailor Pro Gear, a Wingsung 601, which is basically a Parker 51 in terms of size and about everything else, and then a Kaigaloo 316 2021 version. Hopefully I'll be taking a look at this pen on the channel soon. But yeah, you can see it's uh, not a huge pen, not a small pen either. Um, these are all about average sized pens. I suppose it's not a great size comparison then. Um, but yeah, compared to the Lamy Safari, you can see it's an okay size. But again, like I mentioned in my review of the Optima, Aurora pens uh, have a strength in that they fit into the cap very well. So yeah, as you can see, it definitely holds its own against these pens. Again, I think it's a great size, perfect for me for everyday use type applications. So now let's ink it up and give you a little writing sample. So this is the Or eighty-eight and a Rosario red fountain pen, and I've inked it with this. Pilot Uroshizuku, Sukiyo, and yeah, this is the 14K Aurora Flex nib. I think it's technically called Fine Flex, just because it's a fine nib and, and it flexes. <laughs> so you can see in terms of the flex. I mean that's actually pretty good. Some people um, maybe don't push it as hard as this. I think this is about as far as it goes in in terms of like comfortable flex. You can push it harder, but then you start to really push the limits of springing it or not. But this is about as far as it's comfortable to go, and that's honestly pretty impressive. Um, I don't really have that many flex pens on me right now to compare it to, which is too bad. Maybe I'll do a little flex comparison in the future, because um, I do own a lot of flex pens, it's just, as you can probably tell, I'm in, at university right now in my dorm, and a lot of my pens are at home, including a lot of flex pens, so yeah, hopefully I'll do a comparison like that in the future. But anyways, I mean, in terms of flex writing, I am one to lift my pen off the page on accident. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, it's really, it's very like, it's comfortable to flex with. You know, it's just, it's very like, if you were just like, writing, you know, it's good to, you really do feel that bounce. And even just like writing normally, you do feel that subtle softness and it's the reason why I like this nib is because it's springy like it bounces back it's not mushy so it really does feel more like most vintage flex pens in, a, in that way in that it um, it's not just like you push into it and the time just go like bleh <laughs> like they go and then they bounce back when you Stop putting pressure. 
and I think for that reason this pen this nib is really nice I mean and I understand like some people didn't like the fact that the marketing was marketing it as like sort of a vintage flex nib but honestly in terms of modern day stuff this is about as close as you're going to get and if you want something like that I would definitely highly recommend this um yeah in terms of the cap it's imperfect it's just something I've learned to live with um does it damage the value yeah probably I mean if you look at the resale value on these pens it's a little less than most auras um I'll see if I can try and get a better picture of that crack, but irregardless of that, I mean, this is a wonderful pen. It just, it works well. It's a piston filler, ebonite feed, really amazing gold nib. One of my favorite nibs to use, absolutely. It's got a cool ink window, nice long grip section. I really do like these grip sections too. And then the color, it's it's really striking. You can tell it's it's a really nice plastic, even though it does crack. Um, it's a great, vibrant color. Works really well with those gold trims. And for that reason, you know, it takes the, it ticks the three boxes for me. Like, it writes well. It's fun to use, and it's practical to use. Like, even with that problem, it's still a lot of fun to just use every day for like class notes and things like that. It's really good for that. And for that reason, this is definitely one of my favorite pens. Even though it is objectively imperfect and not as good as a lot of other pens, I just really, really like using it. So yeah, that's enough for that writing sample and for me rambling on a little bit. <laughs> so let's go back to my face and give my final thoughts on this pen. One thing I forgot, oh my god, there goes my refrigerator. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention is that this does have an ebonite feed, and although, I mean, I did just ink it, so it definitely didn't have any flow problems there. Um, within normal use, it does keep up pretty well. There is some railroading if you use drier inks or less viscous inks, but overall the feed keeps up pretty well, and then even when it does railroad, it's still actually, the flow comes right back, so it's not like a huge... Uh, deal and I think it's a lot better than most feeds on modern flex nibs because most flex nib most modern flex nibs come with like plastic feeds like stipulas or something like that not to call out stipula or anything it's not just them um, but this actually has a feed that can keep up a little better and I think that does kind of add to it somewhat to that flex experience so I think that's definitely a plus for this pen so in my opinion the Aurora 88 and Aversario is a really good pen as a pen is concerned with flaws not related to its use as a pen when you're writing. When you write with it, it's really one of my favorite experiences that I've had with fountain pens, but it just, I honestly don't know how to, like, how do you feel about this? Because, like, I admit that it's imperfect, but it doesn't detract from my love of the way the pen writes, so should it detract from the love of the pen itself or is there something more than just the way it writes in terms of appreciating pens I don't know I think that's an individual thing for me I still love the pen there's a reason why I have three of them um, I bought this one when the other two were going out for repairs so I guess that tells you my beliefs about it but I think when it came out, people were frustrated that it wasn't this miracle that would fix everything about fountain pen, you know, flex nibs and making vintage flex come back. And it doesn't do that, but it does provide a really great writing experience that I think is one of the best flex writing experiences in modern pens. And it's a good looking pen and it's a practical pen. It works well. It's just objectively imperfect. And even despite that, I still enjoy it a lot. So let me know what you think if you have this pen. Let me know if that's happened to you. Because uh, if it hasn't, I hate to tell you, but go check. It probably has happened. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to watch more of my videos, feel free to subscribe. I'll be coming out with some cool content in the future. 
And yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.